Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch man, co-host Calderness. This episode we're going to be talking about the adventure Simi and I went to to Kokomo, Indiana for PJ Boland's Kilted Classic uh, Hero Clicks tournament. It was 300 modern, so let's just jump right in to the recap. This is episode 412. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How how many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how they six uh, people say? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Okay, Google, the back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. For Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D I A L 5, 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. If you missed it, uh, this last week, uh, maybe two weeks ago, by the time you guys listen to this, it was the Cool Stuffing 20th, uh, 20th anniversary, and there was amazing deals every single day. Um, really, really solid ones like Black Mana chase for like $15 and stuff like that. It was dope. I picked up a lot of those. Uh, sadly, we didn't get a podcast out during that time for you guys to like know too much about them. I hope you were yeah. already good, cool stuff, ain't customers and we're following them on Facebook, Twitter and email and all that stuff. And they yeah, they do because they were great daily sales, but then they also do like uh, sales like every so often that are like more um, than daily, like longer. And they'll do the daily stuff. So the daily sales sometimes they'll look, yeah, look. like sometimes they're nuts. Sometimes it, you can yeah. see like a figure that is going for like let's say like sixty on Facebook, they'll have it listed for like forty. Um, yeah. It's not like it's crazy nice. difference, but it's I mean, it is like a drastic uh, drop in price sometimes. Like I said in the previous yeah. episode, I bought two cases of Empire just because I'm gambling on getting a Venom Magneto. I don't want one. But it's it's uh, someone for like two hundred plus. So my big money, no whammies, no whammies. Uh, uh I really you gotta do an unboxing video for those, man. Um, almost you film no uh, unboxing videos, Simeon. The Venom you Magneto the uh, gambling uh, yeah, to gamble. chase the Venom Magneto gambling videos, dude. Um, but uh, yeah, and also thirty five percent trade in bonus. I traded in one hundred and forty seven ish bucks worth of stuff. I got two hundred and eight dollars if it chose trade in credit. So like D sixty bucks there, pretty solid uh, extra. I'm gonna spend on Hero Clicks anyways for the trade in bonus. So if now is the time to do your spring cleaning nice. yeah. and get rid of some clicks. So I was thinking to go along with that, I was thinking like, man, I you know, it's been a couple months, almost a year maybe. Um I did send them a ton of my golden age stuff, previously golden age stuff. Some of it turned silver, uh, unbeknownst oh, to no. me. Oh, no! So, yeah, uh, like Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls stuff and Joker's Wild and stuff like that did go, like, silver, so I did regret a little bit of that. And so I was thinking, like, most of my collection, because that's about when I started playing, like, Avengers Assemble is a little bit older, um, Age of Ultron, War of Light, stuff like that is, like, older. Um, I can name more sets, but most of my collection is silver and up because I'm a more recent player. And by more recent, I mean like within this last seven years or so. Um, but I was thinking, you know, because I don't really want to get rid of my silver stuff, I don't even honestly want to get some rid of some of my cooler golden age stuff because legacy cards, I'm like, what can I get rid of? And then I remembered the absolute enormous amount of common uncommons and rares from wonder woman that I have. And so, um, between that and like future foundation, like they don't give a whole lot for it. It's mostly nickels and dimes here and there kind of thing, but it's currently just sitting in boxes. So yeah. And then they do, they are giving what 30% extra on their 5% buy list right extra 35% cool. extra. Yeah. A little, a little bit more. Um, but yeah, when I bought the empire, uh, cases, the bricks were going for 80. That was like the sale at the time. And I saw it and I was like, Oh, if I can just pull, like, please, just one Venom Magneto in one of these bricks. That's all I need. That's all I need. Honestly, I mean, 
looking back at Empire, there's not a lot of misses when it comes to the higher rarity stuff. Uh, I know it feels like the set came out and then uh, War of the Realms came out like immediately after. So we didn't really, we did a full set review, but it didn't feel like we did a whole lot of um, like this figure is really solid kind of thing. But uh, I will say also, <laughs> and we can go on to like what made us happy this week because I can just roll some of this into that too. Uh, yeah, dude, roll roll it up. Let's do what makes us happy this week. <laughs> so, one of the things that made me happy this week, um, on my way back from Kokomo, I stopped in Des Moines. So, first of all, I just had really fantastic food all week. Um, I can't remember the name of the little brewery that we stopped in in Kokomo, uh, but uh, had a good Cubano and some cheese fries. Uh, stopped at like an Irish pub the next day and had a good... Uh, burger on my way back i stopped in des moines spent the day in des moines and uh, zombie burger is always the place i love going so i had the trailer trash zombie burger which was fried pickles uh, chicken fried bacon cheese curds and ranch on top of a burger (laughs) ah my yeah my body was trying to shut down by the end of this last weekend uh, the next day, after Zombie Burger, I stopped at this place that I vaguely remembered. I remembered it just being amazing, but it was so long ago that I was like, maybe it's just, you know, bad memory. But it's Northern Lights Pizza in Des Moines, and they've got like eight locations. I was like, ah, maybe they've gone too big, and it's no longer good. Um, no, still very good. So, And again, good in the sense that like liquid butter is tasty kind of thing. So... Uh, their breadsticks are quite literally swimming in like garlic butter and seasonings. There's about a quarter inch of liquid grease under their breadsticks, and it's so delicious. The breadsticks are good too, like, but soaking them in that like uh, quote unquote sauce is very good. Uh, also, while I was in Des Moines, I stopped at uh, I believe it's JD's CD. <sighs> Gosh, I can never oh, yeah. remember. Jay's, CD, and Hobby, yeah. Jay's, CD, and Hobby. I've been there enough times for tournaments and stuff. Uh, I stopped in there. I looked around, saw some really cool figures and action figures and, like, statues and stuff. Had a nice conversation about a $130 N64 game. Did you know there was a Transformers Oof. Beast Wars game for N64? I didn't. Uh, no. I am not going to buy it for $130 either. Uh, but on my way out, I saw some... <sighs> some uh, Empire boosters, and I was like, you know, I already this was after I bought some from Cool Stuff, but I was like, what if, what if one of these loose boosters on the shelf has that Venom Magneto, you know? Uh, so I rolled the dice. I got four. That didn't go too super crazy. Um, I don't normally do single boosters from venues that I'm not a part of, just because I like supporting my local ones. Not that there's anything wrong with supporting ones abroad, but um, it's just hard to spend like 60 bucks and pull rares. Uh, But I got out to my car and immediately had to open them. First booster, uh, Chase Thor. So listed them up on eBay, sold same day for $95. So got my monies back uh, even after eBay fees and everything. Money is back. So boosters were basically free after that point. And then I pulled one of my biggest wants from the set, the uh, super rare Wolverine, the shield Wolverine. I had not pulled him yet, so um, just little icing on the cake. Then uh, I can't even remember what the other two were. It was like Scarlet Witch and Scarlet Witch and Madam Hydra, I think. Yeah. So my other two oh, boosters sure. were kind of whatever, but I can give those to locals. So uh, it ended up paying for itself. That made me happy. Yeah. I'm getting really long-winded on what made me happy, but right. Kokomo, Kokomo trip yeah. was long, and there was a lot of things that made me happy all along the way. So, I'll probably talk a lot about uh, the Kokomo trip, but for what made me happy, really quickly, uh, probably, oh, dude, this is so weird. So for the first time in a while, I went to a uh, Korean China buffet. You know, it's one of those where it's like, look, it's going to be a bunch of stuff. We got some general sows, we got some orange chicken, we got some whatever. But you know, came time for the the end of the meal, pay, get the check. You know what comes with it? Obviously, 
fortune, fortune cookie. cookie. A fortune right. cookie. Yeah, no, yeah, you got it. And I already know. I know a fortune cookie is not really a traditional anything. I, I've seen Iron Man 3. I know it's a made-up American idea. But I still, like, think there's a little bit of a fortune, you know, a little bit of a, something cool. Instead, instead of, like, a normal fortune you're used to, I get... Uh, starts off good starts off strong it says there's more to life than money there's bitcoin and i'm like is my fortune oh, no <laughs> is my fortune an ad for bitcoin is this what this world has Did come to elon musk buy out a fortune cookie company I, I, I was so like sure enough there's a whatever like ftx or some little insignia on the back of the fortune and i'm like is it just y'all just corporatize even further my fortune cookie <laughs> are you serious my fortune's an ad i just i was like i kind of man i don't want to go here ever again i love the food here it's awesome the people are great and nice and they refill my water super fast and that's the best if i'm gonna get an ad for bitcoin in my fortune cookie I'm not sure I want to, like, I don't I don't even keep the fortune cookie. I don't want it. It's not that yeah. important anymore. Not if it's going to be a Bitcoin ad. The person I was with uh, also just had a botched job on their cookie because they got three fortunes wow. with their cookie. Heck of a deal. Uh, three for the price of one. Three for one cookie, yeah. Oddly enough, none of those were Bitcoin ads. So I, <laughs> uh, I was the unlucky person to get the Bitcoin ad. And I was in... Yeah, the smaller chance percentage rate get the bitcoin ad and i still got the bitcoin ad i mean i don't get it uh is this what made me happy not necessarily but i had to tell someone <laughs> and i thought it was funny at the I very mean, least so yeah i don't i don't take fortunes uh into account like at all um no i, I, I mean no yeah, i don't bother with any of that but at the same time it is you know interesting <laughs> that maybe maybe you should invest in the uh let's see what is bitcoin at? uh it's a great time to hop in right now let's see bitcoin price uh, as we both google get bitcoin right now yeah it's only uh almost 40 grand per one bitcoin. i see that so i mean you could you could get in bitcoin. you don't have to spend the full 40 grand you don't have to right have a i can get bitcoin. a percentage of right. a bitcoin yeah yeah great time to buy in there's no way that this will go down uh, yeah, definitely not going to go down. I should definitely buy in at this price. No, it's very instant. Let's see, hundred percent. Uh, it is. Don't even look. Don't even look month. at the past. Don't even look at the past five days or the past month, Simeon. None yeah. of that matters. Yeah, you know uh, what the worst is? Look at, look at the past like right five now. years, because there's a huge oh, chunk of time where if you had That's... bought in. I rocket that skyrocket yeah. in any time before 2020. Oh man! The time. But geez, That's... even at October of 2020, uh, all, all of the bad really investments I could have. Any time before in. January 8th, 2021. Uh, wow. Yeah, I remember being in high school and going to my local comic shop and seeing The Walking Dead number one. Um, they had like several copies, and I was like, "Oh, cool." Yet another zombie comic. Because at the time, it was so, like, everything was zombie this, zombie that. It was constant. It was everywhere. It was everything. And I was like, great, like, another one. And so I didn't pick it up. And then... Here we are. When the show came out in, like, 2015? I don't remember. Whenever. When the show came yeah. out, I looked up what the price that issue number one was going for. Like, a slabbed issue number one. And it was going for fifty grand, so I could have oh. easily turned like mm. three to four or five dollars, whatever, oh. into fifty yeah. grand. But yeah, you never so, know with these things, so don't trust. Here, here's what cookies. I will say, guys: if you're not interested in it, you know, sure, you're not going to be as like bummed out. Like, ah, dude, if I was interested in Walking Dead, then I'm really kicking myself that I didn't buy it because, like, I became a fan later and whatever else, right? If you're not a fan, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Nothing you really like, you weren't going to buy it anyways. That's just the way the dice roll. But we'll say this is my new philosophy for like buying stuff. Think to myself, if it was like double the price or like triple the price in three or four years, would I have wished I bought it now. Now, is this healthy 
for how much I spend money. <laughs> Maybe not, but I, I like you know I buy uh, if it's like Team Fortress Two, I just buy it flat out because I didn't buy the pyro action figure because I was like ah thirty dollars for an action figure in 2013. I was like I don't really like pyro that much. I'm gonna skip it. Now that action figure is like two hundred dollars, you know. So now I'm just like all right, pay whatever for it, man. It just shoots up. It just goes like bry. So uh, that's my advice. Now, uh, now I go to my storage unit where I have action figures that are worth almost nothing. But uh, maybe one day. Uh, let's talk about Kokomo. Yeah, that was our Kokomo episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, Liked catch it. us next week when we open some more fortune cookies. And yeah. Go we on definitely did not rant about sense for 10 minutes no um <laughs> so kokomo indiana pj bullen uh from the critical clicks podcast had the kilted classic it was 100 modern events was ended up being 72 players 70 ish players with five rounds cut to top 16 the pretty drastic cut yeah but, uh, it was good because man did it go late like, it was it, it i would say late. it's drastic but it's also like the most reasonable because yeah. you if like mm, a cut to yeah. top 32 would have quite literally been half the field, and that just doesn't feel correct. That's like there were people fair. that made the top cut that went three and two, so you know it's not like I, if you lost two, not ma- one of them. What's that? No. Go ahead. Uh, go if ahead. You, it's not like if you lost two matches that you were just instantly out. Um, on top of that, there were a handful. I don't know how many off the top of my head, but there were a handful of people that showed up just for battle royals. It was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. I'm glad all like aspects of like the hero clicks community was like somewhat maybe not all aspects, but all all different people were, were there. That's good. That's always good. So uh, we're gonna like just take turns talking about our games here. We'll run them down. First, let's just run through what we built. Simeon, do you have your, your build sheet, your figures, uh yeah. In the ease of grasp, you want to tell us what your team was for the event? Yeah, so I was going into this, so like for, for anyone that doesn't know, I have not played competitively in like at least eight months. I've barely built anything competitive. I've been keeping my on figures and like like kind of, you know, theory crafting in my head and stuff, but not building anything massively competitive i mostly play casual at my local venues and so there's no reason to bust out anything really nasty so going into this i knew i wasn't going to do like super well and so i thought i would just build something like this probably being my last tournament before rotation i wanted to build with some stuff that i really wanted to play that's going to rotate um so that was my first thought after I realized that the mystical team that I built had already been built by other people that are better at running it. So <laughs> I decided not to run that. Uh, but my team started with Eddie and Asuka from the WWE set. Uh, I've talked about Asuka plenty on this show. She has Submission Hold, which is like Poison, except you choose a single character. Uh, she gives them an Asuka lock token. Both characters become immobile until your next turn. They The Asuka lock token increases the damage dealt by plus one for each Asuka lock after, when she uses her specific submission hold. And uh, it's a max of two. So turn one, you deal one. Turn two, you deal two. And turn three, you deal three. And then you keep dealing three until hopefully they die. Uh, yeah, so that's Asuka's whole thing. I think she's really solid. Also, without being able to perplex up damage, she never got one shot this entire tournament. It was always like a double tap if she got killed at all. Um, so the one thing that like always kept me from playing her competitively was not even like an issue in this tournament. That was really cool. Uh, Eddie, he's got the three amigos. It's flurry, but three, that's his signature move. He's got the prob, but can reroll one die. Uh, he's got that stop click that he can heal off of once per game. So it's basically like a double stop. Pretty solid. Um, something that I knew was just going to be an answer to a lot of teams. Because I, I built the team with those two characters in mind. And then I was like, I need to play stuff that is going to keep me from just auto losing. So first up was Molecule Man at 30 points. He just does an absolute ton of barrier for 30 points. So Smoke Cloud is free. And then free, roll a d6, choose a number of non-debris to- terrain markers, and you can uh, 
depending on your d6 roll, you can replace that many. So he can smoke cloud six and then potentially turn those into barrier or blocking. And then he also has barrier on that click. So a lot of blocking that you can do. Uh, Felix Faust for 30. So Felix was an audible that I I had not played this exact team until the day of because uh, I play tested with a variation of it and it was just so slow and I was like something's got to give. So originally I had Felix and Molecule Man and uh, Q Prime because I really wanted to play Q Prime before he rotated. Um, and then I switched out Felix for Q Prime and swapped in the next character i'll talk about but felix uh he does the shuts down prob perplex and outwit within eight on a, a certain role it's super solid it worked so often that it's just disgusting um he also has a free place up to four squares away uh, i will say right off the bat uh, i always equipped felix with the emotional modifier I always equipped Eddie with the all-black necro sword so he could swing through super senses and shape change. And I always equipped Asuka with the Mandarin ring, uh, the Remaker Mandarin ring. So she had poison on top of her submission hold, and then she had double rollout top dial, which I just wanted to give her a little bit of longevity because of that. Um, so the reason I went with Felix over Q is I played one game against Matt Reed, uh, without Felix, and I instantly realized how good Felix is. Not just because, like, so he needs line of fire for his prob and outwit, but even if you're not using him for prob and outwit, eight range with a 50 50 shut off powers, like three really solid support powers, is just too big to not be on a team. Like, especially this is a non theme, just garbage, whatever I thought was going to work kind of thing. Um, Next up was the 25-point Magneto from X-Men Dark Phoenix Saga. This is the 2x2 two two rare. The only reason he's on this team is because I realized quickly how slow Asuka and Eddie are at moving across the map. I really, really needed something to boost the speed. So he's a 25-point TK sidestep leadership. Um, and he also has the free choose a character within range and line of fire. Place that character in a square adjacent to its current square. I quite often forgot that he had Colossal Retail. So by the time of the game where I actually... Incredible Simeon. Rem- yeah. I, I forgot so many things. But um, yeah, I kept forgetting that he had Colossal Retaliation until it was down to like my last three figures. And I was like, oh yeah, Magneto can shoot you from eight squares away and then sidestep back. And he's a 10 for three. He's not doing a lot, but I mean, he is a 10 for three. He does have options. Uh, problem is there's a lot of mystics out in the field now, so I had to choose my targets carefully because otherwise he just dies. Um, yep. And then bringing the team together, so it was those three equipments, Felix, Molecule Man, Asuka, Eddie, Magneto, uh, the last piece that I think just absolutely shuts down so many teams, so many builds, not necessarily shuts them down, but it does a really good job of... Um, giving you a chance i should say uh so uh, it's the the doom swap so i start with the timetable doom uh he can roll two dice place them on his card and re like replace die rolls anywhere on the map with those uh he starts with the time platform that's the only reason i started with this one specifically is the time platform comes in for free and it's a pretty solid object uh he can also steal equipment if i leave him on the board but the options I have to switch switch him out with were Lord Doom, who can shut down animal team kind of things. Uh, any bystander generation. So, like, Calder's team is also, like, a bystander generation kind of thing. Uh, any team that pulls bystanders in, Lord Doom shuts that down. And let's see. Oh, he's also got, like, full speed charge, and he's protected a little bit from... Uh, Opposing characters modify attack and damage minus one. But uh, the next figure on the sideline for Doom was uh, all caps Doom. So this is the one that has flurry traded and then also has power make three close attacks. So the one time I called this guy in or pulled this guy in from the sideline instead of my main Doom uh, was just because I had no idea which Dooms to use. And like this one also does the thing where... Uh, opposing forces can't take most more 
costed actions each turn than one per hundred points of the build total which that's just good even if your opponent is only like rocking like a uh, leadership denying leadership essentially is pretty solid making your opponent work with three actions the whole game and this guy starts with impervious so there's that um I had a few more things on my sideline. I didn't call anything else in. I had like Super Friends and Legion of Doom or whatever they are. I had some of those and some more Dooms, but the only other figure that I ever used was Black Vulcan. And once again, I did not remember to use that until my fourth and fifth game. So, yeah. Four. That was my team. Um, the way it mostly worked... It was like a very slow team, but again, Eddie's protected outwit or protected outwit and range on his top click. Oscar's got two rollouts, so I did not have full map reach. I basically just let them come to me. Had two probs, potential dice swap, um, barrier with molecule man. Most people were more than happy to come like halfway across the map or try and get like an alpha, and um, yeah. So that, that was my whole game plan was like, please just okay. come here so I don't have to w slowly walk across the map. Walk over to me and then maybe I can... Oh, gotcha! Grand entrance! Oh, landed speed! Oh! Oh, and uh, I will say one other before... Yeah, this will be the last thing I say about the team. Um, Molecule Man can make ropes. So Eddie's got flying leap top dial. Molecule Man can just give him two barrier or two hindering markers. And then all of a sudden, Eddie is flying, leaping for it's. A, he's a twelve for four, uh, and with the all black, you get no super senses or shape change. So um, I only did that once, but it was something that like I I knew going into it, I could do. Yeah, a pretty neat tactic you had going on. Nice. Uh, so my team had messed around a lot with wrecker mission points drop off all sorts of stuff we ended up doing a, a record drop off team so we got super rare charge to charge flash and then teen lanterns that which flash can be the green lantern team ability and then of course we have war of the realms 043 b wrecker uh then we have guy gardner red lantern guy dr alia gregor we have tempo 35 points we got moloid we got gorilla grod we got the emotional modifier. And then last, certainly not least, we have Molecule Man. Uh, the idea behind this team is, like I said, Flash copies Green Lantern. We pick everybody up, typically give Wrecker the modifier. We got two Empowers with Gorilla Grodd and Moloid. Um, plus, with Dr. Ollie Gregor, we're going to have What's His Bucket? Uh, pile driver is going to be a 11 for 6 on a hopefully minus 1 defense on an opposing character with a flurry which is pretty dope to me uh, and then of course we have the chainsaw drop that that's another flurry uh, then obviously flash will probably be able to make an attack he can get all the way to square 21 22 whatever he can basically punch the entire map except for the uh the back square so yeah he can punch square 23 which is nice on his last charge so that's five attacks we're making and then if we hit so we're going to make the smoke cloud first to then gorilla city and then the plan is if we hit three attacks we bring in black manta we roll to see how much of the smoke cloud we turn into water and then we fire on the high seas or whatever black mana's thing is called uh i'm gonna look it up right now because i've been getting it painfully wrong quite a bit uh set the oceans on fire so yeah it is the fire on the high sea so we set the oceans on fire so we gorilla city call our attacks hopefully call them black mana set the oceans on fire hopefully by then a lot of your stuff is is like dead or double tokened or whatever right so I'm, i won't lie a lot of stuff needs to you know be going well but you know i get to ignore shape change and super senses uh with the drop off thanks to tempo thanks to the modifier they don't have shape change we just modify that defense minus one um and then this is an alpha strike team that can like kind of take a hit you know guy gardner is not the beefiest 50 points but you know you can't really totally one shot him you know he's six clicks long a toughness wrecker obviously seven clicks long invulnerability impervious stop click impervious uh even the flash is at least got super senses you know and some other stuff and then everybody's not totally up in your grill but uh yeah that's that was the idea behind this team just talking about it 
in discussing it again makes me still like fall in love with this team despite my record um but yeah that's the basic strategy for the team pretty basic drop-off thing uh simeon talk about your first game let's do a little back and forth first games we've been talking for a long time so yeah. we got 10 games to get through but yeah so one more thing about my my whole setup that going into the tournament i did not consider was how few people have played with wwe or remember what the powers were so i want to say uh, like out of the five games there was one game where i didn't have to explain everything so I had to explain the team ability. I had to explain, uh, for the most part, submission hold quite a bit. Um, but like reversal on Eddie, leap climb. Um, like, oh no, they're on a blue click now. No, they're like Eddie's on his first click. Like, you know, all of that had to explain, be explained four out of the five games. And even the one where I didn't have to explain all of it, I still had to like do like refresher things. And it felt... Like, I was just making stuff up. Like, you sound like a crazy person because no one knows what you're talking about. No one plays with this stuff. And it was just the whole time I felt like a crazy person just, like, being like, yeah, I win because, uh, you know, uh, Asuka says, like, uh, a WWE team ability. Um, but, yeah. So, <laughs> match one was against Wes Robertson. He was rocking as an Asgardian theme team. I kept mistakenly thinking it was a mystical steam team because it was um, the the Lokis that work like fates and add plus one to your action total for having five. So he had five of those. He had the, I believe, War of the Realms Chase Doctor Strange. Yeah, War of the Realms Chase Doctor Strange and War of the Realms Chase Spider-Man with the um, Herald dial on it. And then he also had the War of the Realms Enchantress, the 25-point uh, TK Outwit one. I think that was it. I don't remember exactly what the points come to with that kind of stuff. But I think that was basically it. Um, so that team does not have a leadership. It just gets bonuses from the Lokis. So the first thing I did was... Uh, Oh, and here's the other thing. I We tied map roll off. So he was a plus three because that's the most you can be for map. He, we tied map roll off and then we rolled again and I either crit hit or rolled like an 11. And so I actually, without theme, I actually won map to his like I, what would have used to have been like a plus like eight. Um, that was just kind of crazy. But uh, yeah, I... Swapped Doom into the six-armed, all-caps Doom that limits actions to three. Uh, that really threw him off. Um, I felt... So this was his first tournament, and I felt a little bit bad because my team had, like, the perfect counter for everything on his build. Uh, so I had the Necro Sword to deal with Spider-Man's crazy super senses. I had... Uh, I had Asuka, who could deal... Uh, like he had no reducers on his team. So I had Asuka who, who could deal poison and submission hold. And he had all those 10 point Lokis. So I could just kill him with Asuka. Uh, another thing I forgot to do was Asuka gets plus ones. At one point he based me with a couple Lokis and she just poisoned them all to death. And I forgot to even like give her plus ones because I was just like, so, so out of it, like playing uh, competitive. No. Again. But yeah, um, that game went really well for me. I mean, obviously, like, being able to swap Doom and just deny him the plus two action total was pretty big right off the bat. Um, being able to be protected from range with Eddie, um, all of those probs, and I have Felix Faust, who can potentially, on a 50-50, deny the prob altogether, and on a six, deal one pen and kill a ten-point Loki. Um, you know, obviously there's a one, two, and three where it's not as good for me, but his team was very much based on like being able to re-roll stuff. And then Eddie eventually got, you know, three amigos on Spider-Man where he was an 11 for three and Spider-Man can use, uh, super senses, which is kind of his whole thing. Um, Eddie being able to re-roll one die and the three dice that Spider-Man makes him do was pretty big, um, 
Asuka being able to poison Spider-Man off of that click. So, like, it's click two where Spider-Man no longer can do the three dice thing. Um, it was just very handily a matchup in my favor right off the bat. Um, not because he built poorly or anything, just because, like, it just happened to be, like, your team is heavily based on prob. I have the dude that shuts down prob. Your team has plus two to action total because of Loki's. I have a guy that says, like, no, no, thank you. Um, I have multiple ways of dealing damage without making attacks. So, like, Spider-Man was the only character on the team without Mystics, which is why Eddie only went after Spider-Man. Um, Asuka, on the other hand, loves taking Mystics and getting knocked down two or three clicks, or even, yeah, like, two or three clicks is perfect for her. So she loves taking Mystics and then just sitting there with her, like, 20 defense, can't be shot, can't be outwitted, and uh, can poison and, like, Asuka lock submission hold anyone that gets adjacent to her. So that was great for her. Um, yeah, it was just it was just a very heavily in my favor kind of team or kind of matchup. Uh, matchup, yeah. But yeah, he he did a great job. He was more than gracious losing to me. Uh, I only got 115 points, so it wasn't like a complete blowout or anything. It was still you know I was tr- still trying to figure out the team. Uh, it didn't. Okay. This team just isn't very fast, but it was a fun game. And uh, yeah, for being his first tournament, he did a great job. Yes, dude. Um. So, uh, my first game, I went against Grover Smith. Grover was the mind behind Not Nationals in 2020. So the uh, National Guard, Not Nationals, uh, Nationals okay. tournament uh, that I won the sealed at and placed fairly easily <laughs> in the rest of them. Um, he was playing Hellfire, and I had never played against a Hellfire team for I think my biggest thing going into this tournament, I think you guys will all see this throughout the games, is that I haven't, I haven't been any tournaments around us to play, so I haven't pretty unpracticed, I haven't been playing online, because I hate playing online, um, and I was only practicing against like one or two people this whole time, so a lot of the same practice too, uh, playing against Matt, which is, is good, practice is practice, but uh, I can only play against Ultron Pym so many times, uh, anyways... The thing the team Grover had it was Emin Patch, Harry Leland, Dark Phoenix, um, Blackheart seventy five, Venom Magneto, and then the Swappy Magneto. And I might have had more stuff on the team. That's what I can remember. He didn't swap at all. That's what he went with uh, for his team build. Um, his turn, he moved everybody in his team outside of the starting area. Not everybody was within four of Harry Leland. And I will say this. I knew Harry Leland did weird stuff. I'd never played against him before today. And every, everybody I had said that to was like, what? Ever played against Harry Leland? And I'm like, <laughs> I am being 100% serious when I tell you this. This was the first game I've ever played against Harry Leland. And I never want to play against this figure ever again in my entire life. Uh, I did not like it whatsoever. Everything about my uh, drop-off team is what he exists to kind of counter opposing uh, characters in yeah. four squares uh, modify their attack and damage minus two if they moved this turn and then I'm like oh that's not a big deal and then i read the next part can't be placed characters can't be placed <laughs> uh, within four squares of yeah. Harry Leland. so then getting my people next to him is pretty rough uh the first flash attack is pretty rough um so what what ended up happening I'm like, okay, I'll go for his retail first. Everybody's moved out. I think this is all wrong. I went for his retail first. Um, I missed uh, with Chainsaw once. Second attack, she... Uh, well, she made impervious the first one. Second attack, I hit, but then I rolled a two on Blades, and I was like, great, I have to waste a Wrecking Crew um, just to kill. And then, then that's all I killed that entire turn. Um, and then I, I ended up Gorilla Cityying and dealing one ping damage to everybody else, which was nice. And then I outwitted charge. But like I was like, wow, what a bad turn. Out of all the cool stuff I can do, the most I capitalized was killing a Dark Phoenix. And then it was a slog fest from there. Um, the game ended up being pretty close. It still, he got 215 points to, I think I got 180, 160, some, somewhere around there. Um, it was a roughly close game. Uh, 
I just Harry Leland, like having never played against him and him being the perfect counter to what I was doing uh, was really tough. And I think there would have been better ways to work around it if I had have, you know, had looked um, if I had played against it before I could have developed a plan. Uh, I would just say this. I think I should have just uh, straight up went for mission points. I honestly feel like yeah. if I would have just barriered In that kind of situation, like barriered a yeah. ton. Yeah. And just like not worried about attacking barriered up a bunch and bunch and bunch now you come to me and then just do mission points i think that would have been you might hear me say this at every single game i play today or as i recap but i think i should have went for just mission point victory on this game uh but that was my first game oh uh, that was a loss simeon your second game. okay yeah so my my second game was against jeremiah peterson playing a animals theme team yeah so it was animals theme team double maggot lockjaw the legacy lockjaw um spider hammer eye the rocket raccoon chase from war of realms probably something else that i'm forgetting that's not nearly as important um this was one of the teams knowing about like how maggot works and how drop off works this is like why i thought doom was a good play so i sw switched to lord doom uh, shuts down his ability to make maggots and um, or make maggots like Eenie and Meenie bystanders and uh, also just Lord Doom being able to equip the time platform gives me a solid attacker that can't be instantly killed uh, Faust was so he oh that's the other thing the pretty big important piece that he had on the team I guess uh, high evolutionary prime who gives him six theme team probs on top of his printed probs. Um, so Faust did quite a bit of work. And right off the bat, he made like Faust like a number one target. He was like, that was the person that he chose with Spider Hammer Eye to get like the free attack against or whatever. Um, yeah, went after Faust. He double perplexed with um, High Evolutionary, made Spider Hammer Eye a 14 attack with Precision Strike. And he's got three damage, so he can one shot Faust. Like, by all rights, should have one shot at Faust. Uh, Faust is only, I believe, a 17 defense. And so he came up, I think he did successfully hit Asuka. And I didn't bother probbing that because I'm like, yeah, please deal three damage to Asuka. That's my favorite. Um, and I know he can't make like the Eni and Meenie bystanders, so I'm not worried about her get, getting poisoned to death. Uh, but he now has a 14 attack and an attack on Faust, and I only have two probs on it. And I'm like, man, he quite literally has to roll a crit hit or crit miss to miss Faust. And so I told him prior to like his attack, I was like, you know, Faust has like a loaded, um, or I don't think I said loaded because that might be bad phrasing at a tournament uh, as far as yeah. dice are concerned. But I said, uh, you know, Faust has a locked in super senses right now. And he was like, what? Does he? And I was like, no. Like, not really, but metaphorically he does. And so, yeah, he swings 14 into the 17, obviously hits. I think I tried probing it with at least Faust. The numbers were just, like, not even close to there. So I was like, all right, here's that six on Super Senses I told you about. And I throw the die, and it, for some reason, came up as a six. This was, like, turn two or maybe maybe three, but I feel like this was only turn two. And had that dice not hit a six right then this game would have been pretty much over at that point. Uh, yeah. I forgot to heal Doom with Minions of Doom. Doom killed Lockjaw at one point. Lord Doom did. And I forgot to heal him. That was uh, another one of the things that I... Because Doom ended up getting killed by an unactioned uh, high evolutionary. for like He hit me for one damage, and that ended up being like the last click. So had Doom healed, that would have been 75 points. He didn't score. Um Asuka did manage to poison and submission hold a maggot to death. I think Eddie took out another one. That rocket raccoon raccoon did a surprisingly solid job. Uh, he had him equipped with uh, one of the rings. I might have been lightning. It's the one that gives you, when you use more than one lightning bolt, you increase damage dealt to targets by one. Oh, uh, sure. Solid yeah. option. Solid, like, uh, equipment for that figure. Um, but, yeah, it ended up being... 140 to 225 he ended up winning so it was quite literally the doom and let's see i think it was the doom and doom's object 
those were like the two things that pushed him over um Oh, Otherwise, no. we, were, we were pretty much tied like up to that point. It was like a very close game most of the game. This was one of the games where I forgot until almost the very end that like, oh, yeah, Magneto can start just shooting. He's a standard sized character. I could like he was almost up in my starting yeah. area. I could have just been taking actions the whole time to just take pot shots, like whether they hit or miss didn't really matter. Um, I could have just been doing that the whole time. I could have been doing it twice on turns where he damaged one of my friendly characters. Um, I'm not great at tournaments. I haven't played in them for a long time. So, uh, yeah, it was a learning experience, but it was it was a pretty decent loss. I think it was a close game. It was mostly close because of stupid luck that I had on my end. But I also did have some solid counters to stuff that he had. My next game was also an animal uh, theme uh, versus me, which is oh. kind of funny. Uh, I played against Marcus uh, Zilla. So, really cool guy. Um, we had a super fun game, I'll tell you that for sure. Uh, I, again, somehow won map. We, like, tied the first roll, very similar to, like, you and your first game, Simeon. And then I won map against him. So, like, my untheme won against animal. Um, I put him on WWE Arena 4. And then he chose the side that has all the hindering, and I was like, yes, yes, Gorilla City, yes. Um, I was like, perfect. He's on the hindering side. I can Gorilla City him when I alpha. It was like, you know, just use, you know, full whatever of my first turn immunity. I'm going to move up. Like, I'm just going to equip, and then I'm going to barrier around Moloid so he doesn't die. Not that he's going to travel all the way across the map to kill a 10-point Moloid either. Um, and then he, you know... He, uh, this is like huge props to Mark. His placement was on point. He made it very, very difficult for me to have good targets, good adjacency, uh, everything that I like wanted to like have in this like next turn. So my alpha could go off. He made it definitely as difficult as possible. Lockjaw is a very good, uh, already, uh, sponge, damage sponge, but also a very good body blocker. Just like simply oh, enough. Oh, yeah, because he's two by um, two. So, yeah, it's double the I, body blocking. <laughs> Of all the body blocker. That's a big old that's a big dog, dude. That's a big dog. Um so I, you know, count up the squares and I probably did his little team um rectangle. I was like, he's um I'm counting Ah, oh, if I put him here, I put him here. Alright, now let's go see what happens if I do it on the other side. I was like, okay, let's say we hit the left corner with flash. Let's look at where everybody can be placed. Let's look at all the stuff. And then I was like, all right, let's see what happens if we go to the right side of it. Everybody can be placed. Look at all the stuff. What are the attacks? What's line of fire? What's everything looking like? I'm like, okay, let's look at place on the middle. What does that look like? You know, I was like, I was just, I'm like, hey, dude, I'm sorry. This is probably going to be like the longest turn to take. It's the first turn. We're both double alpha you know, or alpha strike against each other. This is like, just, it was just tough. It was a long turn. Then after all of that, after all of that, targeting some people giving up on some targets because i'm like ah, i'm missing them i'm like all right what's an easy kill killing gorilla city seeing a lot of attacks but never missing enough to bring in vulcan what did i end up uh killing of his uh, i killed gorilla grod and i killed chip and, like as soon as the turn was over i was like gosh all of that and i kill grod and chip and he's got rocket raccoon he's got both maggots full health he's got a uh, spider hammer eye he's got whatever and i'm just like oh, i hate myself so much it absolutely uh, screwed the 100 percent. one of the things um, that um also was really fun against animal theme team uh submission hold is one of the actually i think it's the only standard power that uh gives opposing and like friendly characters immobile oh, immobile. so yeah. immobilizing a lockjaw immobilizing like any character honestly but especially like animal because they're so very mobile with a lockjaw and chip um immobilizing their taxi is huge like it's hard to pull off and i think it only works because nobody knows what wwe does but yeah yeah so um, i mean that was basically I didn't. I never wanted to say the game was over from there because I feel like if I could add a second like good turn, it would also been well. But um, probably we probed his running shot and energy explosion, rocket raccoon, probably five times. Uh, I used my tempo prob and my teen lantern prob on it. Then he used 
uh, I think he didn't have any maggots that could see it, so he had to use three theme props. Like, all three characters that could see it probed it. Um, it was like a one and a two was the first roll, and I was like, yes. Then I was like, okay, it was an eight. And I'm like, all right, prob it. It's like a one and a two, and I'm like, yes. All right. Then he probs it, and then it's like a seven, and I'm like, ah, shoot, that'll still hit. Uh, it wasn't a seven. It was it was still a high number. It was going to hit everybody. We were all hindering, sure, in the emo mod down, but it, like that just evens out. Right. You know, it's like, it's still, I was like, ah, oh, this sucks, you know? Um, I prob it one last time. It's another, it's a, it's a two and a two, and I'm like, perfect. Fifteen hits, no one. And then he's like, it was like sketchy looking line of fire. He's like, oh, can he see it? Then arm you pj bolin for giving us line of fire tools we like the line of fire and it's like perfectly good uh it looked sketchy it's one of those line of fires where it's like i don't know that kind of looks weird yeah and like you put it you put a tool to it and you're like oh no i can totally see that <laughs> so like no. there's there is a mathematical way to get a uh, line of fire which i trust more than actual line of fire tools because man sometimes line of fire to like they just straight up hit like the corner of blocking and you're like that feels like it's more than just the corner. It feels yeah. like it's like, you know, but yeah, line of fire um, did come up quite a bit. Dude, it was crazy. He, uh, he uses that last prob and what does he do? Simeon turns it into a crit miss. Oh uh, no, no. He, he crit hits the energy explosion. It was bad. Oh. It, it was bad for me and everybody involved. Buckets, oh, like that's no. a crit hit energy explosion with the getting tokens. And I was like, ah, oh, this is not good. That, that, that with, turn happens. So did um, uh, did his rocket have that ring that increases damage again? I honestly don't even remember. It was equipped with something. Uh, maybe he just had emo mod. I think okay. he might have had a ring on rocket. I honestly I don't gonna remember. Say, that's what ended up happening to Lucas in uh, top eight. Yeah. I believe was oh, or top so sixteen bad. was uh, rocket crit hitting energy explosion, which would normally be three to all hit characters. But then he also had the ring. That increased damage dealt by one for like <sighs> double, double targeting, multiple targeting. Oh, so gross. four damage to a whole team was yeah. yikes. It's rough, yeah. dude. It was rough. I mean, like losing flash like that with no super sense roll. So like from there, then I would say from there, I was like, all right, I don't think we can come back from this. And yeah, that forty-five points was all I scored that entire game. And like for like for winning map for having initiative against a different alpha team and i just like just didn't capitalize and i think that's like all on me i think i chose bad targets i think it had you no know, there's like some bad dice rolls in there but i mean like he had great positioning it was just it was a very tough game uh but it was still a fun game like we still were like laughing and having a great time so my game two uh, not a win but a, a win in the sense that we both had a really good time yeah, I don't think there was really a match where, uh, there's maybe one match where I, I don't know if my opponent like was having fun. Um, my first wow. match, I feel like I just threw so many like counters at him that like I yep. he said he was having a good time, but I was like, are you? Like, don't lie to me because <laughs> if you you're know, not having like, I won't really... blame you if you're not having fun. Uh, but no, one of my other ones, I I feel like it was more on my part for just misplaying, but. Uh, yeah, match three was against Christine Redman. This was my only like complete table loss where I got to like stand up and walk Ooh. around for twenty minutes because I got beaten Ooh. just like way, way before time. Uh, this was a matchup I should have thought more about, but didn't even bother like kind of considering. Um, it was a monsters theme team, so she was playing double sky tyrant, a scarab, a commissioner. Um, Venom Magneto, and I know there's like emotional modifier. There's probably like more to it that I'm just not thinking of. Uh, but like that was the main stuff. That was the stuff that killed me pretty quickly. Um, so she won map, took me to some indoor map that I'm not used to, that I wasn't paying attention to. Had like a fairly open central area, and so I still needed to equip. I was like, obviously, I'm not going to be able to cross. Um, she equipped her equipment, and I was like, obviously I'm not going to be able to cross. Like, I do not have the reach on this team. Even with Magneto uh, being able to move one some, somebody one for free and TK and, like, charge and stuff, I just do not have the team. I also did not know which Doom to go with, so I just stayed with uh, DJ Doom for the die replacement. Every time I stayed with DJ Doom for the die replacement, I rolled, like, a 4 and a 5, which are just garbage rolls for defense. 
they're okay for attacking, but they're just so bad for defense. Like, oh yeah, you rolled a, you need a six to hit me. I guess I can replace that three with a four. Like it just doesn't work. Um, but yeah, I moved Eddie up. So I had a heavy object with Eddie. So he always had to move to it with grand entrance and then equip it. I, so yeah. still had to Did do you that. you place that seven squares away or just five? It would depend on the matchup. So this one, okay. I, just, I placed it five squares away. Most of the time, because he's protected from range, I would place it like eight. Like I would move him oh. all the way out because I did not care if, honestly, if they want to come and deal Eddie three damage, I'm fine with that. Eddie has exactly two clicks where he can be shot from range or outwitted. The rest of his dial, I'm perfectly fine with being on. If you want to get next to Eddie where he has outwit and submission hold and probably three amigos. Like, his attack value won't be as good. His damage won't be as good. But, like, if you want to put him on that, then that's fine with me. So, yeah, I usually put him all the way out. For this one, I kept him kind of close because I wanted Molecule Man to be able to barrier up a little bit. Uh, I rolled a two with Molecule Man smoke. And so um, I managed to dodge the first Sky Tyrant. I did not manage to dodge the second. This is one of the few games where Asuka got one turned. Not one shot, but one turned. Uh, very sad. Asuka's kind of a, not like a linchpin to the team, but a huge damage dealer, especially on a team like this where there's not a ton of reducers. Oh, that's the other figure that was on the team. Blackheart. That's that small figure that was also oh, on that's, the team. That's a pretty decent yeah. uh, so, mention you might want to throw yeah, out Yeah, Blackheart was also on the team. Um, not even sure if Blackheart came into play, really, in like a big way. Uh, I know Commissioner did. Um, turns were kind of long because she had a lot of options as far as attacking and just needed to like measure stuff out. My turns were kind of long because I had very few recouping like losses that I could pull off. So it ended up going 300 to 75. I did kill a, I want to say a scarab. Yeah, I killed a scarab. Another misplay on my part. I flurried on scarab with Eddie, not realizing Scarab has Mystics. It was the only figure other than Blackheart on the team that had Mystics opening up to Eddie to uh, be shot because he took one damage, was no longer on click one. So, ouch. Bad on my part. Um, but then, yeah, I know I killed Scarab, and I want to say, see, 75 points. That would be Scarab, and probably Commissioner would be the only other thing I could have killed. But, yeah, it was over quickly. It was a great game. It was just something I definitely was not prepared for. And going into it again, I would have to really get my barriers set up better. Yeah, that's fair. That's uh, it's rough. It's rough, Simeon. Next game was against listener Matt Reed, who I had played several times in practice before. And he was talking earlier that day how he was going to put me on political rally and how it was like a bad map for me. And I was like, yeah, you know, if go there and i'm here and like yeah that's not that's not ideal for sure uh and so what happened he he wins map and he puts me on political rally and i'm like oh boy here we go i kind of had it in my brain that i was going to like if he put me on political rally i was just gonna like go for mission points my yeah, my idea was because your whole drop off of is day. impossible in that little square yeah it's really bad he was he instantly went to like the announcers like booth side it and i was like i can't i just can't place people there so i just shoot to the other side of the map and i'm like all right mission points and there came a time where i had like eight mission points i was like ah oh, nice 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 then his team was in a more central part of the map and instead of like picking up i think flash might have been dead by now so it was a, it was a tough call to make but i didn't have uh obviously um Yafit in the one chick so it was tough to consistently do mission points obviously i had to waste a lot of actions to break the barriers but i had everybody but pile driver i was saving pile driver for a potential you know alpha pseudo not even an alpha anymore at this point but a potential drop off you know and i'm like i still had guy gardener i still had tempo i still had teen i had molecule man i had whatever i think i was just missing like flash like i, I think he was maybe the only person that died in like a, a deadpool running shot that happened um but anyways so he had his team in a way where i'm like okay i can get rid of felix faust maybe some other stuff 
it was just all of the bystanders he had adjacent to oh, what's his face pim was really really annoying so i was like all right i'm gonna run up i'm gonna charge quake with guy we're gonna kill faust for sure uh and we ended up, yeah, so we killed Faust and we killed some bystanders, but we, we only hit a 17 defense, which was really rough after all the rerolls that happened. So we weren't able to actually deal a damage. Uh, did we, we weren't even able to make Pim mastermind it to anyone, which sucked. Uh, so that whole alpha and then the move with Molecule Man to then place and do whatever with um, whatever, uh, Wrecker, that whole alpha ended up just killing venom magneto and uh felix faust not great not really good like at all um i think definitely could have went like way 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 better but like that's just where it was um and then from that point on i stopped going for mission points and it kind of just became a slog fest and it just was like uh what were the points even uh i got 110 i don't even know what else i killed and then he got 205 so it was just like a rough like slog fest of a match and i'm like man the the rest of the time i was like you know i should have just been trying to go for mission points you know i charged up with bulldozer to like base deadpool like right away didn't end up mattering because that cake deadpool can shoot while based he can ignore characters very lame right that figure (laughs) um so deadpool surprisingly 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 good. good I mean, I'll say people are kind of sleeping on him. I don't know yeah. how like the rest of Matt's game. No, went. that and three. so practicing yeah. against Matt, that cake Deadpool being able to just straight up shut off a without doing like an attack or anything. It's just like a free action within range or something. Being able to shut off a, an equipment and mm. use that equipment's yep. ability is nuts. Um, really, really good. And like for a hundred points, it's really solid. Now, if that Deadpool had reducers, it'd be a little bit better. Uh, but obviously, sinking like power gem in to make him just like a really solid attacker is be- the better yeah. option uh, with the stop click kind of thing. But yeah, that he's hard to yeah, deal that with. Was, uh, that was was my third game, so third loss of the day. Not feeling stellar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, if you're keeping track, I'm one and two. Calder is zero oh and three. So we'll see who who ended up higher ranking at the end of this. Uh, so match four, game four, um, I had dropped. So I started at table seven. I had dropped to, I think, I want to say like 11, 18, maybe something like that, uh, game two, just because I scored low points. And then I dropped to like 23, 24. Uh, I'm at tw- table 27 by by round four uh so i went against aaron lloyd he was running a mystical recruiter swap or not swap but mystical recruiter team so it was the likes of uh venom strange recruiter strange uh wendigo um pretty sure he had his time platform doom and then his own faust and i can't but like essentially this was this, a similar team that I thought about playing in this tournament. I just had not practiced it at all and had also heard other people talk about it. So I was like, well, I'm going to play something different. So um, this team works in a very interesting way. It has to give up points to be at most effect, like it's most effective, but at the same time, uh, it doesn't have to give up a ton of points. So, Every time you kill anything other than like a Wendigo on this team, you have to be prepared for a Wendigo to come in the next turn and potentially deal at least three attacks to you. Um, This was the first game I remembered. So he called in a Black Vulcan at one point, and then I was like, oh, yeah, I too can do that. (laughs) Um, This team's also really hard because Eddie's kind of one of my alpha strikers. He's got a triple flurry... He's got the um, the sword that shuts off shape change, the all-black necro sword that shuts off shape change and super senses and gives him giant reach. He's got an 11 for 3, so I can potentially pump out 9 damage. But everyone on this team, for the most part, has mystics. So uh, first thing he did was steal my ta- time platform with his time platform. So I scored 10 points right off the bat, but he got my time platform. Now my doom is no longer protected. Um I had a one and a, let's see, no, I think, 
I think I had like a five and a six on my doom in this game because he was confused. Yeah. He okay. saw like the, I was using my dial H dice with the little hat pips and he was confused and thought like the logo was a one or something. And so the whole time, um, or no, maybe, maybe it was the opposite. No. Yeah. I had a one and he thought it was a six because it was a little oh, hat. Cause it was that little hat. Yeah. yeah. And so the whole time he kept like saying like weird things that were like, He's like, do you want to like swap in a die? And I thought he was joking because I was like, ah, ha, ha. Yeah, swap in a die to make myself crit hit. Uh, but then I realized he thought it was a six the whole time. So he was legitimately uh, sure. asking if I wanted to swap in dice because it would have made a lot of my misses hit. A, a good move, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this was one of the best dice swaps. So he also had DJ Doom with swap dice. This was one of the best and probably only game that I had with dice swap uh, where it was like big because... There, there were so many decisions. His there was one turn, and this was such a fun game. There was one turn where his Wendigo, so Wendigo's on its like last click, its only click essentially, uh, has not healed yet. His Wendigo makes an attack, and it rolls like a one and a six. Well, that hits, but my Doom has a one on his card, so I can switch the six to a one and make it a crit miss, therefore like killing the Wendigo. Because you take the crit miss damage before you would take the steel energy. Um, he also has a swap. So just like the threat of my swap means that he will have to use his swap. So he's like, okay, I have to prob this. So he probs it. And like, I roll my Faust die. Like, you know, my Faust Ooh. dies were not good at all during this oh. match. But like, essentially, this is how it went. He probed Wendigo, I think, four times in one attack just to try and get a one off of the die and like he couldn't it was like a one and a six a one and a five a one and a six again um you know it was just like every time it was some combination one time it was just like two twos which also missed or something so he just propped it just so that it didn't miss um and then like yeah eventually it was like all right well he's the active player so i'm gonna swap my die in and then he swapped his die in so it wasn't a crit miss but it was still a miss. That was the other thing. It was like, if it was a, a one and a one, the best die that he had was like a four, which made the attack a five, which just, so the whole time, that's like what he was thinking. And this one attack probably took five, six minutes. And just because we were going back and forth like this, but it was really fun. Uh, it came so close. If I had, this is one of the few games where I'll say, if I had like another five, 10 minutes, I might've been ahead um it was a hard battle for me like but everything on his team is pretty squishy i just have to be willing to take the mystics damage uh i had a clear line on the next one to go and so he wouldn't have been able to call in another one and eddie was like ready oh, to okay. uh triple flurry on the recruiter strange which just makes his team pretty ineffectual so had i had like one more turn uh eddie would have had three attacks on Doctor Strange. Now, whether he could have KO'd him, I don't know, but it was 85 to 120. So the difference was 35 points. I literally just could have KO'd that Doctor Strange next turn and won on points from that. But regardless, it was a really solid game. He took me to the Reign of Terror map, uh, by the way. He also, I think that's the other thing. He had Blackheart. I want to say he had Blackheart, and I like. I definitely one turned a black heart, but I don't think it was this one. No. Um, but yeah, so it was solid. Um, him having the time platform and my doom, not having the time platform was really frustrating. That means anytime I attack his doom. So that's the first thing I did was just like, I'm going to hit your doom for, I had to outwit his defense to make it more than one damage. But I was like, I'm going to hit your doom just to get rid of the time platform which means he scores it because it was my object. But at the same time, now I can actually damage his doom. But yeah, that was that was round four. Yeah. Uh, so I am now one and three. Or no, yeah, yeah, one, one and three. <laughs> yes. Will I make the uh, cut? Stay tuned. Will you make the cut? Will Simeon make the cut? Round four was against the local, so someone I drove down with, uh, Grant. Uh, Grant's a great kid. He's he's super funny. He won way more time. than I did this this weekend. He, he did win way more than you did. So 
paid attention. Both Grant and I were uh, 0 and 3 going into this match, uh, and only one of us could come out 1 and, 1 and 3. Uh, what a fool you were, Calder. I know. Look at what you could uh, have gotten. No, I know. I was so stupid. I should have just threw through every game. But I was like, you know what? I was kicking myself for not doing mission points the last game. I said, it's a game against Grant just locals like let's just have a fun game let's not take it seriously whatsoever let's make intentionally bad plays let's just have fun and that's what i did so i like split up the party split up the team i was like i'm gonna bus drop off wrecker and i'm just gonna let wrecker and the wrecking crew go to town with molecule man hang out they're just gonna be doing mission points this whole time and so that's that's our new timer that's our countdown for grant to win basically because I was just like, I'm just going to try to win off mission points. And then the rest of it, I'm going to, like, make terrible decisions. Like, I'm going to charge with Flash and make the only target be, uh, what's his face? Uh, okay, just Grant's team was Fulcum, Wendigo. It was 100-point She-Hulk, uh, strong girl She-Hulk with the belt. It was Mr. Oz. It was Maggot. Some other stuff. Maybe Lockjaw, and I was like, all right, I'm just going to, I'm going to go punch only, only Mr. Oz. How many Oz. points then, can you possibly score on Grant's team. Oh, like how you, many points could I have possibly scored Grant on Grant's 100%, team? percent how many points could okay. you have gotten? All right. I could have gotten from Grant, if I would have wiped his team, 262 points. Grant was 38 <laughs> points underbuilt. Uh, when he so said that, I, was, that day, I looked at him and I was like, yeah. Why? I was like, we had things you could have borrowed. What were you... <laughs> Why? So, he oh. had, I think, two Venom Magnetos, but Kevin was going to borrow one of them. And then, Ants goes, oh, shoot. Didn't bring the other one. Like, instead of looking, because oh. he's not playing theme. He's not, obviously. You see what he's playing. Yeah. He's not playing theme. Like, instead of playing theme, he just thinks to himself... I'm going to choose the chaotic evil <laughs> yeah. route today, and I'm going to undershoot my opponent. So, until points. this match, he has thrown off the points for at least three other people <laughs> with this <laughs> chaos. Not like that, it's like beautiful. really skewed anything at all, but, oh, but it's so funny. It is funny. It is very funny. You know, funny. me in my thinking, I'm like, dude, if I mission point it, I can at least get 300, you know, I'm like, I can totally wipe him without actually chewing through all his clicks. And then it's like, oh, no, no, it's not how they work. You just, you just win the game. Right. Winning the game means scoring all of your opponent's yeah. points. Which means I still only get 262 <laughs> points. Uh, and I was, it was, dude, it was so funny. Uh, it was absolutely hilarious. One, it was one of the funniest games I ever played. I won off mission points, but like, uh, what, how much did he score on me? He scored 185. Uh, points worth of my characters so over half my build i killed a, a lot solid of stuff. college try yeah. yeah like so just we just played a wacky goofy fun game and you know what we were both laughing the whole time we were both having a great time game ended in like 30 minutes and we both walked away and grant was like that was the funnest game i like that was like maybe the funnest game of hero hooks i played easily the funnest game i played all day and i was like awesome like, mission accomplished that's great so i i loved that so we we just had like a stupid fun game it was it was glorious it will it will be uploaded on the youtube channel uh warning a bit of a swearing warning on that game uh there were some loose lips sinking ships in that one so not not for small years <laughs> no not usually all right that brings us to uh, round five so Stimmy and i are tied we're both <laughs> one and three well no, because you scored more points, so Calder's at table 28. Oh, man. I'm all the oh, way baby. at table 30, so at this point, we are technically uh, one, and f one and three each, but you do have more points than yeah. me. So True. my last game of the day was against Devin Noonmaker. Noon Noonmaker? I can't exactly remember. Uh, what was his team? Okay, so it had Faust. It had Commissioner. Team? It had Chip. It had... I, it had to have been non-theme. It had to have been non-theme. I know I won map. I put him on the Orville. Um, that's usually where I put people if I win. I just I wanted to be, play on the Orville map one last time in Modern. Um, it's such a good map, too. It just, like, it really is. And that does, I'm Why not just saying, it? talking about the Orville for no reason. It does come up in this story. So I put him on the Orville. Uh, 
moved up fairly loosely. So this game was probably my worst played game. Normally, I will kind of talk to my opponent, kind of like feel them out, see what they're like thinking, yada, yada. I was so brain dead at this point from a uh, because we didn't even talk about the drive. But like I got stuck in Chicago for legitimately almost three hours yeah, because dude, that there was, was a fire awful. on the interstate. So my actual drive time was supposed to be like nine and a half hours and it turned out to be like 12. So it was bad. It was 12 hours on the road. And then at this point, uh, I've been playing for almost 10. So yeah, my brain was definitely fried in this game and I felt really bad because, um, let's see, I, I moved up. I did all my equips and stuff. I, barriered for like two turns straight because there was just no opening and my team just does not have the reach and I really needed to get closer I finally move Asuka behind a door on the Orville map Ooh. so I move Ooh. Asuka behind a door she's got charge Eddie's the one that really needs the TK because flying leap is maxed out at three but Asuka's got a five speed charge so she doesn't really need that and honestly, I don't even need to attack. I can just move her next to them and just poison. I'm looking at his team. He doesn't have any huge, like, damage buffs. So I'm like, I think Asuka can tank a damage. She just won't be able to attack the rest of the game. She'll take three, go to her last click. Won't be able to take the Mystics from Blackheart. Um, that was the other character that was on the team that I remember was Blackheart. Um so yeah, it was another double Faust team. It was a team with uh, Blackheart. It was uh, it's rough. So Faust, you know, it was also another double uh, emotional modifier. So I'm minusing one to attack. He's minusing one to defense. It's essentially roughly the same depending on positioning. Yeah. Um, I've got Oscar behind this door, and the poor guy is counting out. And so I see him like drawing line of fire to the door and he's kind of like counting out squares counting out actions and stuff and that's something i like to do i like to essentially take four action tokens and be like okay magneto can tk to like here i put another action token there and i'm like then i move that one and i'm like eddie can charge to here like a flying leap to here i kind of count my like moves out ahead of time so when i actually start placing people i don't have to ask to be like oh actually could i move faust up first like, I just have the four actions that I'm able to do figured out beforehand. Also, it gives my opponent an idea of what I'm doing. So, uh, if they're going to stop me from doing something like this. So, he was doing a similar thing where he was, you know, he put an action token out. And he's like, I can move Faust to here. Um, something, something. And he's like, drawing line of fire to the door. At least I thought. He was actually drawing line of fire to Asuka. So he sidesteps. He also had a Marvella. So yeah, he sidesteps with Marvella carrying someone. Uh, I think it was Blackheart. He sidesteps with Chip carrying somebody else. He moves Commissioner and like power act or I don't know. He doesn't move Commissioner, but he like power actions Commissioner to generate a rookie and then goes for the running shot on my Faust or my Asuka. Yeah, my Asuka, I think. Um, I can't remember which might have been Faust, but anyhow, there was a door there. So it was at this point where I was like, oh, that's a door. And he was like, what does that mean? And I was like, uh, it's blocking except for movement, like yeah, blocking well, for everything except for movement. And so then we, because when I'm in a tournament, this is another thing. And I suggest anyone that goes to a tournament does this. Um, I no longer ever assume that I'm correct. I just always defer to a judge if possible. It doesn't matter how inane the like the question is. It doesn't matter how sure I am of the question. I've seen so many high level players get stuff so wrong, just yeah. be completely off base, get completely like rules that you would think they should know playing stuff. And whether it's angle shooting or it's them just being like in the heat of the moment and not understanding like the rule or whatever, um, I've seen people that should know the rules extremely well get the rules wrong. And so I always just defer to a judge now. Um, you know, obviously at match at, or table 30, we're not being active judged, but uh, yeah, like we called oh. Chad over because oh, the question was, are doors still like legal? And I was like, honestly, I think, yeah, because they're printed what? here. 
But what do you mean doors aren't legal? I'm, I've never well because they're not. Before. They're no longer printing them. And so this was a question where I was like, I honestly do not know. Interesting. I would have never even thought to ask that. It okay, could have come. Uh, yeah, and that's what I was like. It could have come up in a like uh, WizKids Info Network like question, and I just didn't catch yeah. it. It's very possible. So I was like, let's okay. ask the judge because I don't want to tell you no and you know no. whatever. Um, but yeah, like doors are still legal, windows are still legal. They're just not printing them anymore, which is what I thought. Right. But again, I'm not going to tell my opponent that because I am yeah. not like the source of knowledge at this tournament. Totally. So I have to let him take back. Well, I don't have to. I could have been a jerk down at table thirty and really want to get one <laughs> win. Uh, but yeah. I let him take back the entire like turn essentially, and I mean that's not even good enough because I could have told him. Like before all of this, I could have been like, "Hey, if you're drawing line of fire to this character, there's a door here, so you won't be able to unless you break the door." In my mind, I was like, "I think he's got two shots, so I think he's gonna break the door and then shoot." And then I was like, sure. "That's good for me though, because like Faust has stealth." And so, <laughs> even in my own thought process, I should have been like, "Hey, man, I don't think that what you're doing is going to work." And normally, I would have. Again, the long drive, the long day, I was just burnt out. And so I have to, like, try and help him move all of his figures back to approximately where they were before he decided to do this. So rough. And then he essentially basically did the same thing anyhow. He was like, yeah, I'm just going to blow that door out. And I was like, all right, fair enough. Yeah. You know, like, that was pretty much all that was left. Like, he didn't have the reach to to blow out the door and make an attack or anything. Um, I ended up killing a black heart with Asuka this turn so or this game so Asuka charged up exploited on Fa- or on uh, black heart getting the one mystics damage meaning she couldn't be outwitted she had a 16 with um a 16 with combat reflexes which is not great that's only an 18 defense uh, yeah but luckily she did she did kill a bunch of stuff the next turn. So um, her two damage exploit turns uh, Blackheart to his first stop click. Then next turn, she poison and submission held uh, Blackheart, just killing him. She also, uh, so she got a plus one defense from that. She also KO'd the, uh, oh, he was playing um, Guy Gardner. So she also killed the chainsaw that turn because it was next to her uh, when she poisoned. And so, uh, that all worked out. It it was a pretty slow game because I was just so bad at positioning, so bad at trying to figure stuff out. Like it would just took like a long time. Um, I was in a good spot. Our Fausts were pretty much neck and neck with denying each other probs and outwits and stuff. So it was kind of sad. I finally went after his Faust with Eddie. I was like, I'm just gonna go for it and try to get some points or not not some points, but I'm just going to go for it and try and get rid of his outwit and prob because I'd really okay. like to have mine be able to do that. Um, whiffed those attacks pretty big, called in some black Vulcans like both of us did. Um, yeah, ended up being 105 to 75. He won. So, again, it was just stupid close, came down to time. It was like one of those situations where had I been able to kill like Faust or Commissioner or like something else – it would have been much closer. It would have been almost a tie game. Uh, but yeah, I just could not cinch it. And yeah, it was it was a fun game. Uh, this was also one of those games where he had zero idea what any of the WWE powers were. So I felt like the whole time I was just lying. I was like, you can't shoot me from range. And he was like, well, I was like, except for Asuka. And then he was like, okay. And then I think people just think that's like a one turn thing. And then I'm oh, like, right. I get to free move my full speed out of my starting area for free. And it's like, that also sounds like a lie. And then Asuka gets hit, and I'm like, oh, no, she's on a blue click now. And he's like, what do you mean a blue click? And I was like, oh, you see, her dial has special blue clicks on it. <laughs> this is not at all a lie. Like, and it truly isn't. This is like true it's all, rules. It's all true. I promise. These are rules that have technically been part of the game for like almost three years at this point. No one plays with them in competitive, though. So, yeah, like, all of that stuff just, like, came to a head, and I was just, like, so burnt out. I was so... My brain was so dead. Um, But, yeah, that was my last match. 
Obviously didn't make top cut. I nice went to one nice. and four was my final <laughs> ranking. Uh, my last game was against Richard Carter. Playing a, uh, his Avengers are Fantastic Four um, team team. He had the Miles Morales Spider-Man from War of the Realms. Had two of those played home kit Wolverines. One at 60, one at 30. Had a Sue Storm from the whatever called Empire thing with the 19 Defend. He had Scarlet Witch for carrying stuff. He had my nemesis Black Leopard uh, and all that jazz. Other stuff. But it was either an Avengers team or a Fantastic Four team. He put me on the Realm of Death, the big old blocking walls map. Look at all them walls. And I was like, all right, cool. Mission points go brr. And I, I basically like threw some characters over in his territory. Kind of like same thing I did with Grant. I just sort of like tossed some dudes over there. You know, and then just worried about walking through walls with Wrecker and the crew, you know, and then mission pointed it up. Uh, It was a 300 to 30 match. I I had fun. I think he had fun, too. Uh, Dude's been playing since Clobber in time, so we had some great conversations. I was like, dude, that's really cool that, number one, you've been playing for so long. Number two, that you've stuck with the game after so many like crazy changes and he's like yeah that's been pretty off and on but you know i i still love this game and i'm like no it's really awesome dude like i think that's bendable and i don't think many people talk about like how kind of big it is that do you still play this game if they've been playing for that long because there's a lot of times where people are just like all right well that's enough of that i'm gonna head out now you know so like i was like i thought that was cool uh, so I ended the day with two and th- two and three. Uh, really quickly, additional prizing. So there's a lot of weird, funny additional prizes oh, yeah. were given out that day. Simi and I both had prizing given out. Uh, ours was build related, and then had a caveat: uh, if build wasn't met, there was a secondary thing. So I was giving away a pitch meeting. I think I've alluded to this before on podcasts. Uh, the prize was. Uh, blah, blah. prize the pitch meeting to qualify for it you had to play you had to main force play captain america on your team any captain america uh with the but you couldn't swap them out so if you're playing avengers swap and you're like specifically playing two captain americas to swap out cap you couldn't yeah that, that wouldn't qualify for the place you gotta play my man captain america steve rogers uh main force and he's got to stay on your team that went to chris Cottrell, who not only played one Captain America main force, but played four of them main force. Not only uh, the, in the only person to play Cap, but yeah, yeah also played also four, played four legacy so Caps. So two-thirds of his build was Captain America, and I was like, this is awesome. It was double Scarlet Witch for the taxi, double aim red for the empower enhancement, and then four legacy Captain Americas. And I was like, I... Love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I like that team. I think it's awesome. Oh, I always like it when I see a team and I'm like, man, you know what? I wish I was playing that because that's just dope. Um, but Yeah, he got a pitch meeting. That'll be coming soon. Uh, he got to choose the set for it. I told him it could be any set, Golden Age, Modern Age, uh, whatever. He chose a set. I will just say no spoilers, but I'm not. It's not a set I would have chose. I'll just say that. <laughs> say like. Um, when we talked about this prize, I said I would have picked like Yu Gi Oh just to like punish you, but yeah. Chris truly picked something that is punishing punished, to Calder. He punished me. Something that he was really like even beyond up, what I could have possibly ah, thought, and it was yeah. it's quite beautiful. Uh, Simeon, what was your prize that you were giving out? Who won it? So, my prize, I'm doing a sculpt swap similar to the charity auction um, that we ran. I will work with like the winner, so. It, the, for the charity auction, it was Chance McCall that one, and uh, I've got a Boba Fett that is going to be made in or like painted and swapped onto a dial that we both decided fits essentially what Boba Fett should be able to do, what his stats and stuff should look like, just like a cool dial. So I've only done three of the sculpt swaps, but essentially it's just pre-existing figures. I'm not modeling or molding like the figure myself. I'm finding an existing one and then painting it and finding a dial that fits that character. I don't remember who won <laughs> so originally Dang, dude yeah i hope he gets his figure no like i told him to message us so hopefully he'll message us soon if not i'll have to message yeah. pj pj remembers who it was um but originally i said and i for- completely forgot going into this tournament so this was like three or four weeks before the tournament 
I had told Calder to tell PJ uh, for my prize, it was anyone that ran WWE f- characters. I completely forgot that's what I had said. And so I get there. And this is after I've changed my team four or five times. I get there, and PJ says, like, um, I don't think anyone, like, won your your prize. And I was like, oh, like I don't even remember what it was. And he was like, oh, wait, no, you did. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, you said whoever plays WWE, and you're the only one playing WWE. So and funny. so we had to do a quick audible. And I was like, man, what's what's something that really encapsulates the kind of person that I strive to be in this community. And I was like, all right, give it to the first person who drops from the tournament. I was like, uh, you know, Aww. PJ then immediately went on to announce that if you drop, you were completely out of prizing. You were like, not going to be considered for the prizing. You know, you were just done. Like he wasn't going to keep track of that out of the entire tournament out of uh, like the 73, 72, however many people I yeah, dude. Only one person dropped. So uh, I, I want to say his name was like Zach, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but yeah, like he, he was the only person that dropped, uh, but he would not walk away like alone or completely defeated. So he did win uh, the right to pick a figure and work with me on designing like or figuring out a dial to put that figure on. So he was saying something about, you know, bank shot cap, the two by two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was saying something about, like, trying to do that, but with, like, a Spider-Man where he's, like, swinging the shield around. So, like, Civil War Spider-Man swinging the shield. And I was like, I can do some custom mod stuff. I would need a solid Spider-Man to start with, but I can definitely do yeah. some custom mod stuff. Getting the effect of the shield, like, swinging, like, in, like, a circular thing, and then finding a... Because at that point, we're essentially looking for, like, a giant reach with precision strike or maybe quake or something. Dial, yeah. Yeah, like, the dial would be very difficult at that point because um, there's not a lot that, like, have that kind of thing. So I don't but think he, like, the totally sculpt knew does exactly. sound really cool. You know, the sculpt does sound really cool. It's yeah. Dope. Um, but that was, yeah, that anti, was my prize. That was Spider-Man. the, uh, yeah. the roller coaster of not knowing if anyone was going to take you know because pj legitimately said like if you drop you're out of prizing i'm not gonna pay attention to like people who dropped and and stuff um so i was like man what if no one played wwe except me and no one (laughs) drops and then i like at the end of the day i guess i just pick somebody and just be like hey uh, bad look it's a bad look um so before we totally wrap the tournament, I will say one of the extra prizes that I won was, I guess, apparently, I was the first person to, at the very least, call it out, uh, but critically miss and take damage from a crit miss. And so I got dice from our good friend Stand Up, and they were very fitting dice to me. They were Bizarro dice, where the Bizarro logo is on the one. Which and is very pick- hard to remember. <laughs> Very hard to remember sometimes. I know I played a few games with them, and my opponent was like, eh, I don't like them. And I'm like, ah, that's why Jay Solomon said I couldn't use those dice many years ago. They are confusing. Um, so yeah, but still, I still like the dice, because like, I hate Superman. So getting anti-Superman dice, I was like, oh, perfect. This, uh, yeah. this is, I see this as an absolute win, basically, is how that went. So I was like, all right, cool. Um, Got to talk about Grant. We got. I'm gonna go through Grant's record really quickly here. So Grant lost. Grant lost the day, but I think he was actually a more of a winner than Simeon or I. Were. Oh, by far. Um, yeah. eas- easily, right? Yeah. So uh, I don't remember. I I kind of told you guys what Grant's team was, but it's like She Hulk, it's Maggot, it's Lockjaw, it's the Fulcum, it's Wendigo, it's the whole 38 points that are built. Exos specs. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. Um, uh, Mr. Oz. Oh, first game. I think it's important to look at his games, though. Ant lost 120 points to 150 points. Incredibly, incredibly close first game for Grant, all right? So that was really, really, really cool already, right? So he, he kind of kept it the same, same-ish same way. Uh, this next one wasn't great. Uh, he lost to Jalen Major. Uh, but he scored 72, and obviously Jalen only scored 262 points, which is hilarious. 
Uh, his next game, if I can try to like find him here as like fast as I can. Grant, where are you? There he is. So Grant uh, lost to this dude named Ryan Fiddler, but it was 150 points to 130 points. Another insanely close game. Obviously, we know my game, I got 262. He got 185, so another close game. Uh, and then Grant's last game, this is insane. He lost, but Grant scored 240 points to the winners, 262 points. I dude, Grant kept all his games, except for one of them, super like relatively like close games. They were all close losses. So they were never these crazy like ah total blowout score no points losses, right? He always scored points and for a lot of them were very, very close games, which is awesome. Uh what did Grant win? Grant won like the best prizes. So he got a motivational speech from Edward Shelton. Uh, I can't <laughs> wait. I cannot wait for that video to come out. <laughs> Five minute motivational speech. <laughs> yes, dude. I'm so ready. I'm so ready for that speech. No idea. He also won a Scott Porter cameo. I believe this was Brad that donated it. Um, I cannot wait for the Scott Porter cameo mentioning Grant talking about his team and like, Hey, it's all right. You know, to lose a few. I was like, Oh, I'm so ready. <laughs> Uh, he got a dishing up clicks for not throwing in the towel towel, which is very cheeky, very funny. Um, little prize, very clever for Aries, for someone who uh, has he made content in the last two months? I don't know. He does but, his uh, Facebook videos, yeah. Who does do Facebook videos? All right, good. I just seen his YouTube's a little uh, yeah. a little ded. Um, but yeah. So and Grant also got like an onslaught trophy and other stuff. And we, I stayed till the end of the day. Sure, we played some battle royales. I won a John Cena on my second battle royale. I was very happy with oh, that. Dang. So expect nice. some, expect some uh, clear C, ah, gameplay uh, coming up soon. So but Calder, how will you ever see him? <laughs> <laughs> if you make uh, that anyways. joke online, just realize you are at least six years behind in making that six joke. years please a hot minute for the love of um, god stop making <laughs> that joke right, same as right, like so the me. camo one i've never found the like it's not even anti-humor it's just like bad original humor and like ah, i get it oh, the Camo's whole, meant to camouflage be uh, man can't, i can't just, I just see you even though you're not actually camouflaged yeah yeah, yeah it's funny I have a camo uh, hoodie that I wear when I work because uh, it's meant for hunting like, and so oh, it keeps where me warm. Are you? And yeah, I get that joke every so often and I'm just like, man. If you could just They're like, oh man, we can't find Simeon Bruce. Where'd he go? And it's like, I hate you all. <laughs> yes. Anyhow, <laughs> back on topic. Anyways. So yeah, that was the prizing. That was the kilted classic. I had a fun time. I think everybody there had a really fun time. I also scored, because uh, I stayed to the end, there was a little bit of a draft. They drafted through everybody. So even Grant got to pick something who got, got you know, la you know his last place. So, like, that was cool. So on the draft, I scored the free comic book day Spider-Man. That's not out yet. So that's pretty cool. A little white suit, free comic book day Spider-Man. Um, I don't know how many people have seen the dial or haven't seen the dial, but I'll maybe post it here in a little bit. But uh, I was like, oh, cool 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 we had a lot of people walk up and talk to us thank us for the podcast that was huge we had people that were like genuinely interested in like my life they were like hey man are you like auditioning for another play anytime soon i had a guy uh, walk to me and say he likes watching uh the pitch meetings with his children and stuff and i'm like that is so so cool you know and, and i actually throughout the day he was like wow 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 and it's like oh man mission <laughs> points are tight and it's like he's like why well, he like just referenced it you know i was like ah i love it dude so like it was cool like talk to him like talk to everybody that was there that was a supporter we went out to eat uh, with matt and zeph and his friend um and obviously simio was there too uh so like that was cool we got to like hang out with some patreon members it was just a great weekend of clicks and fellowship and just like hanging out with everybody and i enjoyed yeah. it i enjoyed it a lot yeah maddie g came up and said he was really excited with uh how we've like changed like the videos our youtube videos and stuff uh, obviously we're doing like green screen stuff we're trying to bump up the quality we've always tried to like have a decent amount of quality i say after our last episode had to be re-uploaded because the audio was so so quiet but we've always tried to have like a modicum of quality and like i've always been trying to improve it and stuff and we've got ian now that is helping us tremendously with like the green screen stuff 
And yeah, we're just trying to like push hero clicks to be an actual fun content instead of just informative slash gameplay. Because I feel like too much hero clicks is just gameplay and informative. And while I get the majority of people taking in hero clicks content are more competitive players, there's not really much reason for the casual player to listen to podcasts or watch videos. I think we're like, you know, doing stuff that's good enough that even like the most competitive people can find some fun in it. Yeah, I was really glad to get some feedback on different stuff. Um, It was cool seeing some people that I had played with online, but never in person. So I had some talks with some random people. It was cool seeing that many new people. There was like almost, I don't know, 10 people that had never been to a tournament before. Uh, Oh, yeah. Uh, That was really cool. Um, it was great seeing Chad again. I haven't seen Chad since 2019 Nationals, I think. Or, nope, uh, 2019 Worlds, I guess, was after Nationals. So, that was really cool. Um, then, yeah, I had never met Matt before, but I've talked to him and played with him plenty of times. So, meeting him in person. Um, yeah, like, all the people that we did see and meet was pretty cool. Uh, being able to contribute in a small part to the con- competition or the the tournament at large was pretty cool. Um, I will say the drive down was truly awful. <laughs> there was multiple points along the way where I was like, why am I doing this? Because like, at one point it was raining so hard that visibility on the road dropped to like 20 feet ahead of me. And all I could see was hazard lights of people that had pulled off onto the shoulder and people that hadn't pulled off and were driving in front of me. So the 70 mile an hour zone turned into like a 50 mile an hour zone. And that was like the better part of the day. And then uh, the Saturday, so Saturday when we were playing, I don't know if you guys took a different route back because you guys are going like further north than I am. Uh, Yeah. But along I-80 in Iowa, there was five semis tipped over in the like, ditches because of saturday's winds they were like saturday's winds were in excess of like 70 and there yeah. yeah we passed five semis that had flipped or like onto their side oh my gosh i mean that, that is terrifying yeah holy smokes and like the wind was bad the whole time like obviously not that bad that was definitely like the the point of like no return and i wasn't driving that day thankfully yeah but like the whole the whole trip was just like white knuckles the whole time yeah yeah simian i gotta say uh not a big fan of any of that that sounds uh, awful uh, we we took some a ton of weird ways dude yeah. we took like a really yes. weird backwoodsy way uh there we took another weird way back um let me let me tell you how weird of like our journeys were because we counted 12 dollar generals and 12 cases uh, on our way there and back and if you know anything about old dollar general you know that is quite literally put in the cornfields of america and yeah. we passed quite a few cornfields of america uh, dollar on our way for home. towns that have nothing else there's dollar general yes. literally basically nothing else uh that's what that's what you get is it's wild my guy it's wild um i think that's good that's a good wrap on the kilted classic I, you know, if you guys are, like, listening to this, like, man, these hosts are, are kind of mid. Uh, they're kind of bad at hero clicks. Uh, we were very out of practice. I promise I've won a States before. I promise I, I won <laughs> 300 won Modern at my at my venue last year. I swear. I swear we're good. Uh, but if you're listening to this podcast just because we are, quote, unquote, good at hero clicks in our own little way, then you're already listening to it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, uh, hopefully you just I... listen to it uh, for fun and not so much because... <laughs> think we're good no if this is the because podcast we'll, you came to for we'll prove you play, wrong <laughs> we'll prove yeah. you wrong man uh no i will say i am fully waiting for disney plus and tarot cards before i actually yeah, can't wait dude. start building like competitively um as soon as disney plus was announced and i started seeing like dials and stuff i no longer was interested in like modern competitive uh, still not super sold on silver but there's some tricks that i have from silver days that i'm interested to toss some new stuff into so i might do a silver tournament if there's one nearby um or at least within like a decent drive but no i was so out of practice and i was also just like i did not you know stuff that like astronomer is still legal gardener is still legal 
We didn't see any or, of that. That was like the last time uh, I played yeah, dude. in a competitive event. That was like the hotness. Uh, in the, so like, that's how far out of practice I am. I'm like, dang, I didn't see a single Immortal Hulk or a Prime Batman. The things that were like just like a few years ago or one year ago even maybe like the top. And so I'm so out, far out of practice that, yeah, I'm just waiting to like try and find some niche in a new set essentially. Sure, dude. For sure. Uh I I can't wait for Disney Plus. That's that's where I'm really gonna have like the bread and butter and like the fun of Hero Clicks is gonna be reinvigorated for Disney Plus. But I I've got a lot of stuff I still just can't wait to play because uh, I beat the Pile Driver Legacy from Zef this last weekend, which completes my Legacy Wrecking Crew. So I can't wait to play them. So that's gonna be cool. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the questions. There are dozens of us. You Roy, Jackass, and I know we've been going on pretty long, guys, so we'll try to speed through these, but uh, if they're fun, we'll talk about them, because they're fun. Roy, Jackass, what's a Silver Age figure that you see becoming meta? So, it's already been meta, so I'm, I'm going to discount all the figures that have already been meta and, like, already were in their own times. Man, this is tough. Didn't do any research for I'll any say, of these questions. Beforehand. So... We've seen a lot of legacy figures that are like on the 150 plus kind of range. If they don't have a lower dial that has been added, um, or they don't do at least as many things as Thanos does, so that's like both dooms. Um, that's like quite a bit of like the like the heavier like pieces that they've redone. Like the uh, the Thor and Loki comes real close. That one's probably something that could work depending on what comes out but like the thor's yeah. chariot i don't ever see being like a competitive I piece uh, have obviously. the answer <laughs> yeah, hey i foresee doing. swarm as becoming a meta <laughs> silver staple deadpool in the x-force swarm. swarm yeah dude bees <laughs> bees Simeon oh bees. i was thinking Oh, silver aged figure. I was thinking yeah, legacy silver kind of age. figure. No, 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 not bro. Silver, silver age. age. Silver age. Oh, well, that's easy. Go with too. swarm. I will um, try to build a swarm, but yeah. Things that I'm super excited to build with in silver again, depending on how many ID cards end up getting played, Sheriff yeah. Strange will definitely make it to some teams. Sheriff Steve Rogers might make it to some teams. Yeah. Okay. Anarchy will definitely be on a few teams that I do. Man, what was there? Is one that I had recently thought of doing again because they the, something about like the way the powers had changed had made it really good honestly uh between tarot cards strife from wonder woman 80 and the don't die stuff that was like truly don't die so that would be like uh daredevil from earth x uh haha -ha joker stuff like that where you could give people mystics you could give ultimate nullifier to daredevil stuff like that is like stuff that i've thought about trying I think Ultimate Nullifier on Daredevil is just really gross. I don't know if it actually works. I should probably double check that. It, it but, does. It does. It yeah, does. You'll, it's, you'll be right. You'll be yeah, right. it's just, uh, man, like imagine picking five and just like, sure, Daredevil might die, like quote unquote die, uh, but your opponent will also take five damage. So it's something that's just really fun. Um I'm surprised that uh, more people aren't thinking of like ultimate nullifier with some combo. Maybe that's because doom will be played in silver, but I doubt it. Like, I think there's just a ton of options. Anarchy is my number one go-to um, right, cool. for the same reasons as Oscar. Yeah. Uh, next up, stop have... clicks. Rock is Brad. I assume this has got to be because he was listening to an older episode, but he says, yeah. what are y'all's max reps on opening peanut butter jars before a tournament? This Sadly, is the Matt Reed is, episode. It's just a one. It's just a one max peanut butter. I've never tried to open more than one jar before a tournament. You don't want to wear your fingertips out. This was So this was the episode, he's referring to the episode we had Matt Reed on, where we were talking about like intimidating your opponent and... Uh, I don't remember the yes. exact specifics, but essentially, um, because hero clicks, there's no like muscle group that you can really work out to help spin the dial of hero clicks. Um, I can't remember who somebody was like, you could open like jars of peanut butter and like close them and like open them again to get those. Don't muscles. act like that wasn't. Don't act like that wasn't you, Simeon. That okay. was you. It might have been. I truly okay. don't know. I don't, it was you. I don't want to take credit just in case it wasn't. But yeah, I'll say one as well because 
Yeah, I get a big spoonful and then I'm done. But no, that was a great episode. I think it's like 380 something. Uh, But yeah, whatever whatever the episode with Matt Reed. We hardly talk about Heroclix, but it's a very good episode. It's good. Uh, Luke 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 goes on to ask, the year is 2020-69. Kids launches a PNW exclusive, Pacific Northwest exclusive charity event to raise awareness for hungover dads. One of the fellowship prizes is designing a bystander token. Tell you, this token will also be the debut of a new combat symbol, Totemus. What would the symbol for for Totemus B, what would it do? So that is that's the omelet thing. You right? said you said debut, but he clearly said debut. Debut. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> me. So if it's supposed, this is like a very eagle cast question. Like frittatas, their thing. Pacific Northwest yeah. is their place. Can I just tell you really uh, quickly? We went to a restaurant called Frittatas, and I will be throwing shade at you, Eagle Cast, right now. They did not look good, so I had chocolate chip pancakes instead. And I was at a restaurant called <laughs> Frittata. Um, and but I was, it was like, in mm, Indiana. I'm gonna I miss mean... that. To be fair, yeah, it was in Indiana. They, you were wrong. in the You're same town that had a smoke store called Coke and Smoke. Yeah, dude, I really hope that meant Coca-Cola. <laughs> I feel like it's not. I looked not. up the reviews, and they didn't have any bad... Well, they didn't have a lot of bad reviews, so they're at least keeping Good. their customers happy. Um, so if the Frittatimus bystander is supposed to somehow put to dial uh, a Frittata, man, it would have to I- be I'm going like... to say uh, some type of... Something to break away, because from my understanding, you put oil on top of it after it's almost sort of done cooking, so it's a little slippery, maybe. That's all I got. That's all I. That's <laughs> okay. all the knowledge I gathered I mean, from somebody adjacent to me eating a so frittata. My my original like answer for this would be uh, the pinch bystander that I was thinking about. Oh, yeah, you want the um, pinch bystander? Yeah, a bystander that can create a copy of itself that's zero points. Like that copy can't make a copy, but you know it can create one copy to make "quote unquote" the pinch, where you block off a line of fire. So it has to be an adjacent square, but not necessarily like a square within line of fire. That was my original idea. So <laughs> I think he's looking for less of like a realistic frittata, like a food item, and more for like the bad question kind of frittata, which I don't know how you symbolize a bad question. So you do like yeah, man. sticks. And real, do I don't know. I don't listen to that terrible show, so I honestly with, have no idea what he's referencing. Uh, minus one to friendly and opposing, like to all characters, minus one to attack with mystics and outwit. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's not our specialty. Luke. That's not my thing. Our specialty is uh, uh, Budino. Ranch? Uh, Uncanny Cause <laughs> asks, I've heard a lot of disappointment about Disney Plus not having legacy cards. What are your guys' top five? Oh, best, worst legacy figures. All right, here we go. Um, Yeah, baby, I wish HC Realms had a way to search for that. Uh, My top five, as I rattle them off, as I understand them. Let's go She-Hulk. Let's go Legacy okay. Captain America. Okay. Let's go, I'm going to say Destiny, 20-point prob. Yeah. Yeah. solid uh and then two more figures i'm gonna say pile driver i'm gonna say thunderball we're gonna get rid of destiny and then we're gonna add uh <laughs> bulldozer boom perfect legacy cap legacy she hulk wrecking crew legacy those are the top five best ones top five worst ones are gonna be wonder woman wonder woman wonder woman wonder woman and wonder woman yeah done i will yeah. say the wonder woman set did have for all the stuff in the set i get it was like wonder woman set they could have included like half of them could have been like green something lantern, else yeah uh, giganta like i don't know a harley quinn a different amazon like anything um man so legacy cards started with wonder woman uh, yeah, they did those start are with future probably Foundation, some of the worst ones just because like they're just they're you know they're the newest or they were the new and like weren't quite dialed in yeah the ones in future foundation yeah um i'll say i'll add to the worst one i'll say the still modern legal at the time of this recording x-men rise and fall legacy 002 sentinel which is also the g002 x-men dark phoenix saga sentinel um it's somehow worse for the same points 
I like the trait from the old one. And this one is somehow worse for the same points. Um, I'll say that's one of the worst ones as well. Uh, I will say some of the best ones. Uh, Deadpool for the flavor text, but not for anything else. Um, Destiny for the prob, but not for anything else. Obviously, Thanos has seen so much play, but at the same time, I'm like, man, it's just... it's not. I can't imagine finding joy in playing that figure. At least competitively. Maybe if you're not like min-maxing it, it's fun. But I truly cannot understand the whole barrier fun tango thing. Uh, I I get I played barrier on my team, but I was also like had to actively go to my opponents. All my stuff was close combat. Um, I'll say I'm really liking the from the uh, Empire set the Legacy Namor, which is originally from Secret Invasion. Uh, I hadn't looked at him a whole lot before, but the power generate a standard character from on your sideline that's 15 points or more with the dolphin symbol. I'm actually he really cool. digging that. He also has a charge flurry without having speed, so he's dolphin with flight and a 10 speed charge with flurry, and he's an 11 for four top dial. So I'm, I mean, he's 150 points, but I'm actually kind of digging that Namor. Um, and then I, I like guess, him too. I just need to get a hold of his old version. Yeah. I definitely don't have that figure on off the top of my head. Um, from the Fantastic Four, uh, what was it? The storyline, the 2020 storyline, uh, that Doctor Doom that makes mosquitoes. He's a ton of fun. I've played him the most out of all of them. And so, yeah, that'd be uh, one, two, three, four, five. I'm assuming I've said five. That's my fifth one. Uh, all right. Next up, we have Matt Reed saying, what's the one thing that you would have changed on your team at the Kilted Classic? And you can't pick Thanos. Also, Call didn't play any Captain America. <laughs> He's a fake fan. Uh, I'm still a real fan. I just, <laughs> can I not play other characters? And also, in my defense, I haven't made a Captain America that has enamored me as much as Cap Resi. So, since him, they haven't made a, a Steve that I've been like, oh man, I gotta play, like quote myself from the earth x podcast i was like i will play this figure on like almost every team for the next two years which competitively i did play him a lot um i didn't play him on every team for the next two years but still i played no. that cap resi <laughs> i still play cap resilient a ton cap resilient uh a tons tons of play from your boy all right so yeah. uh anyways uh i would have changed about my team don't know if I would have changed anything. I think I would have just I to gotten more practice is all I would have actually changed. I don't yeah. think I would have changed anything. If I would have changed anything, I would have maybe made it lean more into mission points more so. I might have. Yeah. So the only thing I would have changed um, definitely would have practiced it more. If, if only to save my opponents the trouble of me taking really long turns because I could not figure out, like... I knew I had a play I could make. I just had to like double check what all of my figures did because I had not played. This was the first time I'd ever played Doom, like casually or competitively. I've never played Doom before. Uh, wow. The swap Doom. So like this was the first time, and like I had to check through my Dooms to like make sure I was switching to the right one. Uh, double check them to see if I like had active traits like at all or like what I was doing. Um, first time playing Felix Faust in a major way. Uh, first time really playing Molecule Man in a major way. Like, I had pulled him in Sealed, I think, and I had played him, like, once or twice. I think I played him in another tournament, but, like, never really got a ton of use out of him. Uh, so, yeah, just practicing the team more, I think, would have been really beneficial. And then on top of that, um, the one object I really didn't get nearly as much use out of as I was thinking I was going to was the Emotional Modifier. So... As good as it is, I don't know if this team needed it. Uh, I think All Black could have also... That was like a late addition to add because Eddie's triple flurry is capped at three damage, so I didn't know what else to put on him other than that. I might have done the Alchemical Potion or Alchemical Fire, whichever one gives pen damage. I might have done that instead with Eddie. I was tempted to do that with Asuka but she needs the defense boost more than anything. The emotional modifier just works really well with Felix Faust because he's already kind of bopping around and denying stuff. So that's why I went with it. But 
as far as actual things on the team, if I had taken that off, I would have added a different ring or maybe like the WWE ring and then like a map bonus or something. Yeah, this team just uh, did not... Um, the map bonus or the WWE ring would have helped open up some blocked off maps that I got put on. But other than that, this team did not need to be changed too much. It just needed a better pilot. Next up, Dog We Trust James said, Knowing WizKids, I don't expect this to be a thing, but ponder the question, what if? This team ability and what it might do. And then he has the Scooby-Doo logo, little, little SD. Ooh, Dakota? No, Scooby-Doo. Uh, so here's my thing. I think it's it, it's not too much to say that since a team ability will give you protected outwit, I would say this team ability gives you outwit targets of this outwit cannot use protected outwit or whatever that would be dope. i think i think that'd be amazing scooby-doo yeah. gang outwitting you solving clues doing what they do best yeah i can't yeah i can't think of like a better one than that because that's really solid obviously right, yeah, every time i see a new like like this is a dc kind of licensed like through dc kind of thing at least as far as we know um yeah. if we get a full indie like another ip kind of set I want them to get the WWE treatment where they get this big team ability that does multiple cool things. That's one of the reasons why I still run WWE. They're protected from range. They've got grand entrance. They do all these cool things. I really like it. I'd like to see any like new property get that kind, same kind of treatment. Uh, what I don't want to see is just them slapping the Batman ally team ability on the Scooby gang. Um, yeah. But yeah, something something cool like yeah, an outwit uh, opposing characters targeted by this outwit can't use protected outwit like until their next turn or something. That'd be pretty cool. Be dope. And then that is all for questions. If you guys want to send us a question, you can do like all these Patreon members did and join our Patreon and send us a question on our questions to the show tab on Discord. Honestly, we have one of the best uh, you know communities in Hero Clicks. Join our Patreon. You could like. And any message about anything, and you'll be easily welcomed into the Patreon family. Everybody will be like, oh, that's cool. So say like, hey, this was the team I was playing last week. Or talk about literally anything, and everybody... So there'll be someone at some point in time. Uh, we'll shoot you a message back, and we'll talk to you. I really like our Patreon. I really like our... I mean, our Discord community is really, really awesome. Uh, but yeah, if you join the Patreon, guys, it'll help support the show, which in turn supports us and we get to do a lot of really cool things you've seen it on our youtube we are increasing quite a bit of production value uh looking feeling editing a lot better nowadays it not that it was ever bad but it's just getting better and we're really proud of all that and all the work that we've been able to do so uh the support on patreon really makes it happen plus if you want really dope action tokens slash bystander tokens slash whatever tokens you can get those from our Patreon. I got all the bystanders ready for Disney Plus, and by me, I mean Luke. Uh, edited all those cool pictures together, and also like Watcher What If tokens and loot light objects for Nebula and food tokens for Zombie Cap, and all that fun stuff. Those on our Patreon. Uh, also, make sure to check out the show, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, our newly bought in Twitter, uh, and then send us an email. We get emails from time to time. I like getting emails. Uh, it's better than just the uh, the spam. Uh, Hello, would you like some money? I am an African prince, you know. <laughs> uh, so if we get an email from you guys, it always brightens my day up a little bit. And it's dialage for hero clicks at gmail dot com. So those are all the plugs. Oh yeah, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you haven't already? We got the Disney Plus unboxing up there. We have the Disney Plus. Uh, Heroclix sealed team building video and then later this week uh, I'll be uploading a mix of my the classic games and also we will have uh, the Disney Plus sealed games coming yeah. up it's a really fun tournament that we did for Disney Plus we I it's a, Simi and I both had a blast it's playing a good it. primer for to see because you never really know when it comes to sealed and when you like have like brand new stuff obviously something can look really good on paper but then in practicality it is different so if you're planning on playing it in a Disney Plus uh, pre-release or sealed event, uh, give them a watch and, you know, see like, oh, yeah, this character really seemed to pull their weight or like this character didn't. Spoiler, John Walker's good. <laughs> like, It's real good. It's, it's good. wild. Uh, but yeah, check those out. They're going to be really fun. Um, we had a good, great time filming them. Ian's been doing a great job editing them down and getting in some funnier moments caught yeah uh, oh yeah but yeah 
And if you want to get some funny moments caught, you do that by playing Heroclix. And if you play Heroclix, you got to catch some uh, some Heroclix. Uh, wow. uh, cool what a bad com. transition. Yeah, speaking I know. Speaking of good transitions, instead of bad ones, if you want to transition from some old clicks to some new clicks, you should check out CoolStuffInc.com. No, I didn't leave a long pause just to make Calder feel awkward and say something so that I could work yeah. off of it. Yeah, Instead, what a scumbag. What I think a scumbag. you should check out CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find the latest HeroClix singles and sealed products. Uh, they've got some daily deals, and like we said, their buy list is 35% right now, bonus. So Ooh, yeah. definitely check that out if you've got a pile of stuff that you're trying to get rid of. But check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. You did this to me, Simeon Bruce, you scumbag. Uh, I mean, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not richer nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails.